All right, so let's talk about how to document your artwork for your portfolio. Here's a camera that we will have access to. This is the Canon, kind of the fancier version of the Digital Rebel. So this is the oh, uh, 60D, EOS 60D. Um, so it's kind of one step up. It's still a common use camera, not super fancy. So maybe you'll be able to afford this. Um, thinking about lenses. So here's kind of a multi-use lens that often comes with a camera, super handy. Uh, but not so much for this because you can see that there's all this glass in layers to be able to zoom in and out and do these things. So when you're documenting artwork, you probably want something very simple. This is a fixed lens or a prime lens, very little glass in this, uh, which means you have to move your camera back and forth to, to focus on it. But uh, I'm going to put this machine here onto the camera. So what you want to do is have a wide open wall where you can place your art um, and to have that entire space evenly lit. So if, let's say you have a body of work, you've got eight paintings to photograph in one day. Uh, start with your largest piece and then make sure that wall is evenly lit for the largest ones and then you can put all your smaller ones up uh, without having to reconfigure the lighting because everything is nice and even. You want the lighting to not be behind the camera because then you're going to get a glare, you know, oil painting, something like that that's shiny, stuff with gold leaf in it, you're going to have some troubles. So what you want to do is have two lights 45 degrees from the center of your artwork. Just a word about these lights before I continue. just want to say these lights are relatively inexpensive daylight bulbs. So daylight is great because it gives a fuller spectrum of color. Um, when you're photographing the work. Also, there is a little gauzy diffuser cover over those lights, which just helps to spread the light around and make it easier to get evenly lit without hot spots. So we've got a light over here, a light over here. The glare from this light is going to bounce over there. The glare from this light will bounce over there, leaving your camera in the center, hopefully without any glare on it. So I have downloaded a light meter onto my phone because you guys probably have phones. Um, some of these programs are a little bit annoying, but you just kind of look around until you find one that works. Either that or you can spend 450 bucks on a light meter. Um, so why not use your phone? My only goal really is just to be able to check. So I tap this, go around and check that my lighting is even within all of this zone. And it's sort of telling me at the moment that I'm a little hotter on that side than this side. So actually, well, I might even just do this. Uh, or I might move this light. I realize I'm not can. I'm going to move this light back a little bit because I was a little hot on that side. So now I'm going to try this again. Tap. Tap. Uh, checking it out. Check the middle, because sometimes you're too hot in the middle with two lights. Ah, it does say a little hot in the middle. Let's double check. Uh, a little, little hot in the middle. I'm just going to turn this one slightly to the left, and we're probably probably good. So that's nice to have a little objective measure um, that helps us just to make sure our whole big area is even for this artwork. Actually, another thing, uh, this artwork is actually a vertical piece. Who cares? You can photograph it any which way that's easier to light. So uh, this is easier to fit in the room, and so this is going to work for us. Uh, keep it even because left and right is easier to, than if it's very tall. Um, so just put your pieces up within the same format that you've lit. So we've gone to this effort to set up some excellent lighting in here. Uh, but there is actually another way which can be easier and good on the budget, which is worth thinking about, which is that you can photograph the work outdoors. Um, actually, natural light, daylight, is excellent for making all of your colors look good. 
and it's easy to get a even lighting if you go out on a gray day. So you don't want any direct sunlight that casts weird shadows. You want to be sure it's very even. A gray day is ideal. Um, yeah, and it can look really, really good. Make sure that your camera is tilted at exactly the correct angle to have the image look undistorted in your lens. So no key stoning. So on the tripod, you know, it's pretty easy. You put a vertical wall inside, um, in, inside the room. It's very easy to make it square. It's a little more complicated if you don't have it you know, hanging right on a wall outside. You have it propped up or something. Just be sure you take the time with your tripod to make sure that everything is exactly square, uh, which saves you time later on. One of the key things for accuracy is to make sure that you use a good color balance. Um, certainly, you can do corrections for this later, but it's always better if you can get it right in the camera. One of the tricks I like is to set a custom white balance. So I have here a gray card. This is neutral. With this camera, I can just take a picture of the gray card. There it is, gray. And then tell the camera that that is a neutral color. So to change the settings on the camera, on this Canon camera, there's a Q here, which basically gives you lots of info. So you can see, we're gonna change a few things. Here it says automatic white balance, which is great for general use. But if I go into that, I get other options for daylight, shade, all these different things. So this one here that has K uh, is for Kelvin, which is the temperature of the light. Um, so if you really know what kind of lights you're working with, Kelvin gives you a lot of control. It's pretty great. Um, but it's also, um, yeah, Kelvin's pretty great. It's also a little bit technical, so I often enjoy this one here, custom white balance, and that will work with our gray card. So I've set that to custom white balance. There's one other step I have to do, which is to tell the camera to use our photo. So I'm going into menu, I'm going into custom white balance, so under these camera tools, custom white balance, select, and now I say yes, I want to select the gray card as my white. So that says the gray card is neutral light and it will be balanced for the particular lights in this room. I should say actually, one reason that we're doing this with these lights in a room with no windows is you don't want a shift in color temperature across your painting because that can be very hard to fix. So if you have two colors of light or you have an open window nearby, that can really mess things up. So you want to be sure that you have one white balance that suits your entire picture. Another useful thing to set right off the bat is up at the top here, ISO. So that is the sensitivity of the, uh, well, the film. It's not film, but that's the idea. Uh, so if you're doing sports or something like that, you want to crank that number really high. However, we have a tripod. We have no reason to crank it high. And actually, it's better low because you will get a less grainy image by picking a low number. So anything under 400 might work. I like to pick something like 200, and that will work for our ISO number. Uh, oops. So I'm moving through here. Let's make that neutral. Uh, so this one is gives you some shooting options. Single shot. Uh, high speed, no thank you. So it's giving you different options. Self timer. This one is really useful. This is a two second delay. So what this means is that you won't get any camera shake from pressing the trigger of your camera because the shot will happen two seconds after you press the shutter. So we will select that. So I'm coming down through this menu. One more thing to change. This here is for large, smoothed out JPEGs. That's a pretty high quality JPEG, but we can do even better for this. So if I hit that, I can actually move this to a raw setting. So that really allows the camera to take in a lot of information, which allows you a lot of freedom as you do the editing process. So there we are. Actually, you can take both. You can take the raw and the super large JPEG. It gives you some options. So I've set this here, AV. The A means that I can fix the aperture. 
So I've moved in here to where the aperture setting is. So this is a very wide open aperture, which would make, say, your portrait in focus and the background blurry. What we want to do is make sure that this is the most forgiving as we can with focus. So we're going to crank that number up to a high number. It doesn't need to go quite to the top, but maybe we'll just crank that right up there. So that will make it easier to have an artwork that is completely crisp and clean. So at this point, I am raising my tripod on these legs because I want to get the camera right in the very center of the height of this painting so that it is nice and square and even. So I have extended all the legs. I'm not just going to put this very close. And judge if that is in the middle. It's still a bit low. Let's crank it up. How's it look to you? Too high. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty good. Maybe a little still too high. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Now I'm going to back it up. So before you get too involved, it's always a good idea to make sure your lens is clean. So I give this a little wipe to make sure that all the dust is off there. And go right into the corners of the lens. Because the last thing you want is to finish your photo shoot and realize you've got dust wrecking your image. So this button here brings the image up onto the display. You can see that I've framed this very carefully so that the painting is completely square to the edge. Having this grid option is nice. Sometimes you can get that on the screen, which can help you make sure things are square. So I have this roughly in focus here. But if I want to be really precise about my focus, there is a magnifying glass over here. I can go in two levels of zoom. And you can see that that is quite blurry, even though it looked reasonably OK from a distance. So now I can get that as crisp as I can, and then set this back to the whole view. And I know that the entire thing is in focus. Uh, I'm going to press the shutter. It counts to two seconds. Nice long exposure, getting lots of good resolution in there without a high ISO. And there is the image. If I press this down here, I can see the image I've taken. I can zoom in and just double check that everything looks great. So I have a raw file that is now ready for editing on the computer.